Coming up tonight on a special edition of Murrow News 8, college athletes prepare for a life-changing experience. Plus, the MLB season is in full swing as the Mariners try to claw their way to the top. And from the hardwood to the ice, it's playoff season for both the NBA and NHL. Those stories and more tonight on Murrow News 8. From Studio B on the campus of Washington State University, this is Pullman's only nightly newscast. This is Murrow News 8. Good evening and welcome to a special sports edition of Murrow News 8. I'm Chris Calhoun along with Eli Meinrich to kick off the NFL Draft. Now Eli, Jared Goff went first overall to the Rams and Carson Wentz went second overall. Two quarterbacks at the top. Do you believe these quarterbacks are set for the future? Yeah, Curtis, I'll be I believe they're uh, set for the future, but it's going to take a little while for them to become successful and for them to reach that next level. Let's start off with Jared Goff. The Rams were last in the league in passing offense last year, and Goff isn't considered a guy who's going to come in and improve that stat right away. Switching gears to Wentz, Wentz is probably going to start the season as a backup to Sam Bradford, not see that much playing time, and so they're really limited on the impact they're going to make right away, Curtis. Absolutely, but I believe if there's one quarterback that can really get it done, it's Jared Goff. Over 12,000 passing yards during his time at Cal and 96 touchdowns as well. He played in a pass-happy offense, but really has all the physical tools to get it done. It'll be interesting to see how these two quarterbacks continue to develop over time. The Seattle Seahawks are picking 26 tonight, and I believe that they should work on upgrading the wide receiving core. They have weapons like Doug Baldwin, Tyler Lockett, guys that can really get it done, but they don't really have that legitimate number one option just yet. The guy like Sidney Rice that can really get it done in the red zone. They have Jimmy Graham, but I think they need a guy that can really score touchdowns and get it done in the red zone. Yeah, Curtis, I completely agree with you. They do need a wide receiver, but I'm going with offensive line for my first choice for the Seattle Seahawks. John Snyder has had limited success picking early round offensive linemen, and to me, he needs to hit a couple home runs when it comes to this draft as far as offensive line goes. And as a zone running boot action team, the Seahawks need to prioritize toughness and athleticism right up front for me. And it's also going to be really important for them to really work on protecting Russell Wilson, even though he's obviously a top five quarterback, definitely hit more than any other quarterback in the league, arguably. The Cougar football team has a history of recruiting many players from American Samoa. Maroon News 8's Scott Brownlee is live at Martin Stadium with a story on how these players can impact the program going forward. Scott? Curtis, a small island territory in the South Pacific has become an unlikely recruiting hotbed for the WSU football team, but it really isn't as unlikely as you might think. Several players from American Samoa suit up for their football team over the years. Joe Salavea joined Mike Leach's coaching staff as the defensive line coach in 2012, and since then there have been nine players recruited from The Rock, including the seven currently on the roster. And it isn't a coincidence. Not only has the tiny island territory of 65,000 become a hotbed for football talent, but Salavea knows the area pretty well. I was born and raised there. I'm so excited to, to recruit the island, not just Samoa, but Hawaii. Uh, it's the, the opportunity. They're not going to come here and sit around. Okay, and that's, that's the kind of program we have here. One player from The Rock who sees that opportunity is sophomore linebacker Logan Tago. I heard about some of the Samoan NFL player. I mean, that's the, that's the big deal back home. If, like, it's the football is a big thing. So I try my best. I push my, I mean, like, everything I can do in high school to play, like, play everything I can do to get a scholarship. And for my family, that's it. Since arriving in Pullman, Tago has noticed some major differences between playing football in Samoa and in the Pac-12. In back home in our high school, it's way different. Like, my, my, the high school I'm from, like, we don't have a weight room, we don't have a locker room, and even like our equipment, we don't have that much equipment from back home. I mean, most of us share our helmets during the game day, so, but here, like, it's, it's everything, you know, you just get everything. But Tago's reasons for wanting a scholarship went beyond the gridiron. It's, it's academic first. It's like back home, like we have like, I'm not saying we're lower, but we have like, it's not that high level education, but that's all I want to uh, say to uh, our kids from back home that we good now. Like, no matter what school you go to, it's all about academic. Tago's education first sentiment is one that's echoed by Salavea. Well, the biggest selling point for me is graduation, academics. Uh, most of my visits is all about based of uh, 
uh, guys coming in and finishing four years or, or, or earlier with a degree. You know, making sure that they understand what we have here academically, the supporting staff, and, and all the different types of uh, colleges that we have here that they can pursue. And uh, you know, those are the, the main uh, uh, recruiting points that I make uh, with, with the families back home. As long as Salave is here in Pullman, expect a continued emphasis on the recruiting of American Samoa. You know, these guys have been a tremendous uh, asset to us, and uh, we're just uh, uh, excited to be able to, to, to visit the, the islands uh, every year and uh, been able to sign some of these guys. And we're looking forward to the next wave of guys coming off uh, the rock. Before the new wave comes in, the Cougs' current group of Samoan players, including Tago, hope to help the team improve on their best season in 12 years when they kick off their new season right here at Martin Stadium on September 3rd against Eastern Washington. Back to you, Curtis. Thanks, Scott. What a great sign of things to come for Cougar football. Coming up after the break, Fletcher Bailey will break down the weather for the hottest games in sports. Don't go away. Take time to be a dad today. Can you help me with this? My new dad teaches me all kinds of stuff. Hmm. Sure. He helps me with homework. That would be 3.6795. Thanks. Yep. He helps me with my decision making. I wouldn't use this one. Ever. And he's even teaching me how to drive. And that's why cars have bumpers. I'm learning so much. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. Welcome back. I'm Fletcher Bailey. Let's take a look at the weather. Now, here at our Pullman studios, uh, it was cloudy outside, looked like rain. I told you it was going to be like that yesterday. Forget about it. Let's look at weather in the sports world. Weather in the sports world. Try to say that three times fast, right? So, first off, we're going to kick things off with apparently a football reference for a basketball scenario. We got a high of 57 degrees with the Boston Celtics facing off with the Atlanta Hawks. Uh, let's hope that uh, the Celtics can keep things hot, right, IT? Represent, he's got ice in his veins. Speaking of ice, we've got, uh, we got the weather over with the, pa the Pittsburgh Penguins facing off with the Washington Capitals, and we're going to keep it consistent with a high of 57 degrees. Now, after that, tomorrow we're going to shoot with the Safeco Field. The Mariners are going to face off against the Kansas City Royals with another high of 57 degrees, and with that, the Seattle Mariners wrap up a weather three-peat. That's all the weather we have for these games. Coming up after the break, Kelsey Meyer breaks down the closely contested AL West. Same time next week? Well, of course. Put away a few bucks, feel like a million bucks. For free tips to help you save, go to Feed the Pig. Welcome back. I'm Kelsey Meyer with the latest in the battle for the AL West. Taking a look at the current AL West standings, the Rangers sit on top with a 12 and 10 record, with the Mariners only a half game out of first. The winner of this division will secure a playoff spot come September. Still to come, our analysts make bold predictions about ongoing playoffs. They said I couldn't dream. Called me a piece of trash and swore that's all I'd ever be.
said a bottle couldn't see the ocean. Give up. Go back to the dumpster. But I didn't listen. I made my way. And now, I am what I've always wanted to be. Welcome back. I'm Brandon Holloway, joined by Evan Barron to discuss the NBA playoffs. Let's not waste any time. Evan, what is the biggest surprise thus far? Well, Brandon, obviously the biggest surprise are the injuries. There are a plethora of injuries. We can say we can say Chris Paul and Blake Griffin with the Clippers, but the biggest one is Steph Curry going down for two weeks. Two weeks, which is going to be a play a big factor to when the Spurs are going to match up with them in the conference finals, and the Spurs are going to knock them off because Steph isn't going to be what Steph was in the regular season. It doesn't matter. I mean. Looking at CP3 and Blake Griffin, like you said, they have to play against the Trailblazers in game six. So hopefully the Clippers can come back and give a little bit more time for Steph Curry and the Warriors. But even if that doesn't happen, they're still playing in the Trailblazers, who they beat three of the four times in the regular season. So I feel like the Warriors, no matter what, will be just fine. But think about the East, you have to think about Isaiah Thomas and Avery Bradley right now going down for the Boston Celtics. They still have to beat the Atlanta Hawks just to move on to the second round. I don't know if they can do it. Well, it, um, as well with the Cleveland Cavaliers, you know, it, with them going 4 nothing on the Detroit Pistons, it seems like they're a walk to represent the East. But you can say that another team that could be on the rise is the Miami Heat, maybe. No, Miami no, Heat. no, no, no. The Charlotte uh, Hornets are going to win that series. Really? You don't the think D. Wade's going to pull it off? Oh, no. The only team that's going to battle against the Cavs is easily the Raptors. The Raptors, with Lowry, DeRozan, granted they started off poorly, they will be just fine come the Cavaliers series, because they, you know what? They want to beat LeBron. LeBron does not deserve to go to another another championship in the East. Well, it should make for a great finish, that's for sure. That is. Switching to the NHL playoffs, who do you see winning it all now that we are in the second round? Well, I see I see that San, the San Jose Sharks are going to win the Stanley Cup, their first in franchise history. It's going to happen. What really was their selling point was they defeated the Kings in easy fashion, defeating them 4-1. to one. Their goalie, Martin Jones, had a save percentage of 91%. In that round, he saved 125 shots and just allowed 11 goals. Yeah, but we have to move to the East and talk about the best team right now in the entire NHL, Washington Capitals. Ovi, he's going to do great in the final series. Not he's against Marvin Jones. Not against Jones. Yes, not he against is. Jones. No. Have you seen his season? He's no. unstoppable. He's on a hot streak right now, and that will continue in the Stanley Cup Finals. I think he's going to choke, man. He's choked in his last previous playoff San series. San Jose has not done well at all in the playoffs either. But this is a different team this year. A new coaching staff, great big, great up front play. I just think they're going to do it. Thank you for watching our special sports edition of Murder News 8. Join us tomorrow for our last news show of the semester. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Good night, everyone.